this week on the show, we have former reality star Sarah Jahuni from the Bravo series Shaws of Sunset, who has come out with her new single, In My Bag. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to put understanding that we have two ways to focus our energy, on our own self-belief or to focus on what others think of us. So which one is more powerful? The reality is we've all known someone who is filled with potential but allows the opinions of others to influence them or to talk them out of their own greatness. On the other hand, we all know someone who we might have underestimated initially but is so confident in themselves that they eventually convince everyone to believe in them too. So what's the difference between these two people? The person who doesn't see their own value or cares too much what other people think never reaches their full potential because their energy is focused on what other people think of them rather than their belief in themselves. Yet, the person who chooses to believe in themselves with complete conviction is able to silence the critics and instead tap into their own belief system of knowing their worth and capabilities. Remember, when we harness our personal power, we become unstoppable because as we think, we ultimately become. As Oprah Winfrey quotes, you don't become what you want, you become what you believe. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. And let's talk about your new song, In My Bag. It's such a great song. I know this is your first EP. So tell us about, you know, how has it been going from reality TV, Shaws of Sunset, to now being a solo artist and bringing, putting your music out there? It is so rewarding. It is so exciting. It does not feel like a job. It feels just like, I don't feel like I work. I feel like this is just like the most incredible thing. And you know, um, In My Bag is just such a fun song. It's so good. I feel like I, it's the first song off my EP that's coming out at the beginning of 2024. And it's like the last song I did for my EP. So I've just been very hyper-focused on my career. And I just felt like, you know, the day I got to the studio that day, I was just feeling like, on a high, I felt like I was really loving the music I was creating and the EP as it was coming together. And I just kind of felt like, you know, I was in my bag. <laughs> Next up on the show, we have former reality star Sarah Jahuni from the Bravo series Shaws of Sunset. From reality TV to recording artists, she has come out with her new single, In My Bag. Sarah, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for being here. And I want to talk about, we have a lot to talk about before we get into everything. Most people know you from the reality show Shaws of Sunset. So tell us about that period in your life. You know, I'm so grateful that I did Shaz. It was such a fun experience. I'm a lot of drama, but you know, <laughs> you had to take the go. I would do it again, you know, um, for the right show. So um, yeah, at that time in my life, I was, you know, there was a lot going on and I've learned a lot from that experience. I've grown a lot from that experience. Um, and I'm so grateful for it because it just opened a lot of doors to, for me. And now I've moved on and I'm doing my music now and so i have all of that to thank to shots you know we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that for that yeah. experience Absolutely. And I feel like Shaws of Sunset were one of the few shows that focused on Persian Americans, if I'm, if not only like the one of the only shows that did that. So how is it kind of bringing your culture to the forefront and being part of that? You know, I'm really proud of it for that because, you know, it did give us representation. Yeah. And, you know, I grew up in Indiana, so I never could turn the TV on and see a girl who looked like me do anything I ever wanted to do. It just didn't feel possible at that time. And I remember just, you know, growing up in Indiana, nobody had any reference of what it meant to be Persian. When I was, I remember like 2015, I was in Atlanta one time and I met this girl and she's like, oh, what's your background? I said, oh, I'm Persian. She was like, oh, you're like so-and-so from Shaza Sunset. And it was, I was kind of like, well, yeah, I guess, because that was her only reference point to Persian. So it has definitely brought a lot more representation to us. I'm very grateful for that. And um, it's just, I'm really lucky to have been even just a small part of it. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned Indiana. I know that you went to one of the top uh, business schools in Indiana and you have your MBA. So how did you get introduced from to reality TV from, uh, from school? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm Persian, so education is just like 
super important. When I moved, when I was telling my mom I'm moving to LA, she's like, okay, you have to just promise, I can't stop you, you know, you're an adult, but you just have to promise me that you don't let that town ruin you. You definitely still get your MBA. So I was gonna get my MBA no matter what. And I use my MBA every day in this industry, you know, just making decisions and um, about my own career. It's given me a lot of confidence to trust my decisions. And so, you know, I'm really grateful I did get my MBA. And um, I was working in corporate America before I was in Shaw's. So Shaw's kind of came at random. They just asked me to be on the show. And I was just like, absolutely, I'm a Sagittarius. I have to like have the experience. So, you know, there's, I don't know, I'm not, am I the only, reality person who has an MBA. I don't think so. I'm sure a lot. Maybe, maybe. No, no, no. There, I'm sure there are times. Educated. I think that's part of being like Persian, I guess. Yeah. And, and what did being on reality TV kind of teach you about yourself? Because you're put in so many challenging situations, so many people. What's something you learned about yourself? Yeah, being on a reality show, it really teaches you a lot about yourself. You get to see yourself in the eyes of others. For me, it just made me a lot stronger, made me more courageous. It made me really just not care what anybody thinks. When you get the opinions of so many people and you're just like, okay, you really can't please everyone. It just makes you just feel like, okay, I'm just going to do what feels right to me. Yeah, and that's the place everyone wants to be, right? Is your authentic self. You don't care what anyone thinks. So I'm glad that experience taught you that. That that's amazing. And fast forward today, you're a successful recording artist. So so tell us about that. Yeah, so you know, music is something I always loved from childhood. It's something I always wanted to do, but it just felt like a dream that was just too big. <laughs> and it just didn't feel really possible for a lot of my life. And then after Shaw's, you know, I got a lot of opportunities. When you do a show like that, a lot of opportunities come and I just felt like I really just wanted to pick the one that I was most passionate about and I felt like when music kind of came into my life as far as far as an opportunity and I was going to have like the support as far as like the team to be able to like actually do it I felt yeah. like okay God is like speaking to me like hey look you can do it now and even though it took some time after Shaw's I'm just like it was the only thing that I wanted to do and I'm very happy. I'm, I'm so fulfilled in the journey. I'm not fulfilled once I have a number one record. I'm fulfilled every day. It feels amazing because I've done corporate, I've done all the things I was supposed to do. And so I'm just really interested in doing things that I'm very passionate about now. Yeah, I love that, that you said that you did the things you're supposed to do, but now you're doing what you really want to do and what you're passionate about. So congratulations on that, because you know, you. following your passion is what life's about, right? It's about doing it what you really, really want to do. Yeah. It really and your song Playboys, I think it's got over 100,000 views across all platforms. And I know you worked with a Grammy Award winning uh, producer for this uh, song, and I know it's to inspire people. So tell us about that song. Well, I just was, you know, I did it a couple of years ago and Playboys is just like a very relatable record. I feel like, you know, it's a record that young adults can listen to and just it gives them, it lets them, reminds them, you know, of who they are. If they're ever in a relationship where somebody is making them feel like an option or somebody who is maybe abusing their power and just, it just makes you, when you listen to it, it just reminds you of, of who you are, it makes you feel good again. And it, it's kind of just like an anthem to never give your power to anybody else, you know, just to hold it and just, you know, yeah, the confidence. I think we've all been there, right? <laughs> we've all had those relationships. Who hasn't? Who yeah. can't relate? <laughs> exactly. Very relatable music. You know? and, and let's talk about your new song, In My Bag. It's such a great song. I know this is your first EP. So tell us about, you know, how has it been going from reality TV, Shaws of Sunset, to now being a solo artist and bringing, putting your music out there? It is so rewarding. It is so exciting. It does not feel like a job. It feels just like, I don't feel like I work. I feel like this is just like the most incredible thing. And you know, um, In My Bag is just such a fun song. It's so good. I feel like I, it's the first song off my EP that's coming out at the beginning of 2024. And it's like the last song I did for my EP. So I've just been very hyper-focused on my career. And I just felt like, you know, the day I got to the studio that day, I was just feeling like, on a high I felt like I was really loving the music I was creating and the EP as it was coming together and I just kind of felt like you know I was 
in my bag. <laughs> yeah, the song is really good. It's really catchy. I listened to it a couple of times, and now I use it as my workout music just to feel, you know, <laughs> to feel, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a pump up song for sure. Yeah, and what I like about your music too, in this song, it has a bit of um, the the background music has your Persian roots with it. So let's talk about bringing your your culture to your music. Yeah, I think this song especially, it's like the perfect blend. You know, I'm Persian American, so it's a very Western song. But at the same time, in the beat, you can hear like the Middle Eastern influence, which I felt like together is just so me. You know, I'm I'm both uh, fully. I grew up in the States, but I'm grown. I've also grown up in a very, you know, strict Persian family. So yeah. I have both sides. And so it just naturally comes out. It's not something that I'm like mentally trying to do it's just part of who i am and it's going to be part of the music when it calls for it and it just felt good on this record yeah i'm curious to know what do your parents think of your music because you know as you said the culture is a little bit strict i'm sure we can all relate to that so what's been your parents feedback well my family you know they were always when i first did shaws they were you know they were all very hesitant and then once I did shots, they were like, okay, you carried yourself all right. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? We don't be worried about you. And so then when I, actually when I did the music, I didn't really tell them what I was doing. I just kind of like, I don't know, I'm, that's just kind of how I am. I don't really talk about anything until it's done. They kind of just found out about the song when it came out. And they were all kind of like surprised. I kind of just didn't tell them because I was still figuring it out myself. And I didn't really want to be kind of like, I didn't want anybody's opinion of it or to dissuade me, you know? And so when they heard it, they were very impressed. They were very, you know, proud. And now they're like my biggest supporters. So I'm very lucky that my family supports it. And they kind of like, you know, they're more familiar with everything now. So, you know, they, they really are encouraging me to just go for it. And they believe in the music, so that's nice. I love that. They must be so proud of you, beauty and brains. And I, I love that. So <laughs> I'm sure they're, they're, they're very proud. And Sarah, I want to ask you, who would be your dream collaboration music wise? Oh, dream collab? I have so many, but I'm just going to start at the top. <laughs> Drake, duh. <laughs> who doesn't want a song with Drake? You know oh, I mean? <laughs> okay. And he's from that Toronto. Be, that's dream, but you know. One day. <laughs> I, I like that choice because he's from, we're Canadian, he's from Toronto. Toronto, see you, exactly. See how we're back here, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And Sarah, I created my platform to inspire, to uplift, and really to showcase anything is possible if you have a dream and a vision. So I want to ask you, what's one piece of advice that you would have for someone, maybe putting in the work, you know, and just not seeing their dreams manifest or maybe someone that's not happy in their career and one is wants to take that leap into something they're passionate about. Well, I say I'm a big advocate advocate for changing and transitioning careers if you're no longer fulfilled. I don't think somebody it it doesn't really make sense to me for one person to work the same job for 30 years. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think people evolve and I think it takes sometimes experience and for you to have the courage to, you know, not everyone at 21 years old has the courage to make these risky leaps, you know, they haven't had enough experience. So I'm big on just going for it. I also worked in oncology for a while, so I've seen how like precious life is. So I'm so, such a big proponent. I just think, you know, if you're doing it, just make doing anything that's your dream, just make sure you're doing those dreams for the right reason, because it is a tough journey takes a lot of sacrifice and it takes time. And I think that people, you know, I think we live in a time where everybody wants instant gratification. So I just think that, you know, if you're just aware that things take time and you're doing it for the right reasons, because if you're only doing it for like monetary or the attention or for any reason that's not just, I guess, pure, it's really hard, you know, yeah. but it's doable. And I just, I always tell people, just do the first step. You don't have to think about the 10 year goal. Just take the first step. What's the first thing? Enroll in that class or enroll in that thing. Learn the skill. Just do this. Just get the LLC. Just do the first step and then the next step and then the next step and just break it up and don't think about it so because it can if you just try to think everything at once, it's just overwhelming. I always just do the next step. Right now all I'm worried about is my EP. Then I'm gonna worry about what's after that, the next song. Then just that's all I'm doing. And if you break it up into baby steps, it's so much more doable. And I would also say one more thing that just be mindful of who you share your 
dreams and visions with because you know not everybody is going to be as courageous as you and you know support that or understand your calling or your dream or what you want to do not everybody's going to get it and i think when dreams are you know in the infancy stage they're so fragile that i think you know it's best to just keep it to yourself and to people who actually you know have done it or can give you advice because they've been there and you know until you really kind of get it going before you really start to share with people because it, it takes time and they're just going to keep asking you like so what's going on with it yeah. and you're just like oh it's taking time you don't want to feel discouraged by now that you've told people what you plan to do yeah that's i want to talk a little bit more about that um but before we talk about that i like that you said you know just to not overthink it just to do it i think so many times we overthink things and yeah. you could have once you just start and you don't overthink it, you realize how much you can get done and that, you know, once you actually do it, you realize you had nothing to worry about in the first place, right? And you realize it's not that hard. You think it's so much bigger yeah. in a heart and so much more unrealistic before. And then when you actually just take the first step, you're like, Oh, this is how they're doing it. Oh, okay, that's it. That's all you need to do. Okay, just think a little more practice here. It's really just taking the first step and as cliche as that sounds, it really just is that. Absolutely. And I also like that you said, don't tell everyone uh, right away, like wait till it's done. I think that's something that I've been learning. I was telling my producer a couple weeks ago, I'm like, sometimes I tell people prematurely what I'm going to do and then it doesn't happen. And I feel like it's sometimes other people's energy. And he's like, really? You think that? I'm like, no, I think that's, that's, you know, until it's done, then you tell people. So it's funny that you said that. That's something I've been learning. So thanks for that, by the way. I think Absolutely. And it really helps with keeping your mind focused because now you're not, you're just focused on what you're supposed to do, not focusing on, oh, what's these people gonna think? They're thinking it's coming out. They're thinking yeah. I'm doing this. I have to put it out prematurely because it's not ready. Nobody, if nobody knows, you take your L's in private. You know what I exactly, mean? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then you show them at the end and you're like, look what I've done. You're right, I, I love that. And Sarah, what else is in store for you? What else are you working on? Right now I'm fully focused on the music. It's just, I feel like I'm on a roll right now. I'm really loving it and um, really focused on dropping my EP probably January, 2024. And that's that's my biggest focus right now. And just getting the music out there, letting people hear it and just making more. Very nice. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for being on the show today. I love this song. We're going to put the links below too for your music so people can listen to it. Such a catchy song. Congratulations. And uh, we look forward to seeing your full EP in January. So it's exciting. Thank you so much for having me. I had a wonderful time. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch live through YouTube and Facebook.